Hi, it's Tim Barnhart from Legacy 420 on Tondinaga First Nation. Just want to welcome you to our grand opening on April 20th. Um, there'll be a live show there and lots of smoke and lots of edibles. So please join us on that day. Come on down. Drink coffee. <laughs> So, we're at Mark Emery, uh, used to own this place, or was a part of owning whatever, and I think it was the whole, like, it was the idea of it being new, and also the fact that people were, like, finally being able to purchase a product that was, you know, like, that, you know, it was legal, it was coming in here and buying freely, you know, a product, right? Marijuana, man, and getting you know, recreational. Right? They have a lounge in the back too, right? That's another idea that we don't talk about. Is the whole idea of having a lounge at a dispensary to enjoy your product that you just bought, right? So, you know, I think you know. Like I said, I keep on talking. I said First Nations people should be getting involved in places like this. You know, not not only uh, not only uh, uh, the whole idea of the dispensary, but also getting into the idea of having a lounge also. And with our people, we used to, you know, we used to grow hemp, right? So why not have a dispensary? Why not have a lounge? And why not have to grow your own, right? With the idea of either what? Through uh, to one of the ideas that'd be to have a greenhouse, right? You can grow anytime, right? Grow your own product. Uh, not only can you grow like uh, marijuana or hemp or whatever it is that you want to grow in a, in a greenhouse, to support your dispensary. But you can also, like I said, grow tomatoes, potatoes, corn, or whatever it is that you want to grow in a greenhouse. Like I said, with the whole idea of our own people, so we got to get back into growing our own, right? Getting back into our own, uh, um, our own ways, our own culture, back to the way we were. Uh, I keep on talking about that, you know? Like I said, then I think one of the, like, the whole idea of uh, dispensaries, um, would be kind of like almost like the first step of getting back into uh, the way we were. Why shouldn't you have a, a dispensary in downtown Toronto? Uh, First Nations owned, you know, First Nations run, First Nations employees, just like here, you know, like, um, and then also like funneling that cash towards what the community needs, what our people need, um, say like for the homeless or, or like, you know, we got a whole lot of issues with uh, residential schools and, uh, Six to scoop or, or just um, missing murdered Native women and funneling some of that cash towards uh, you know, uh, some of these issues or just doing you know like I said uh, paying back to the community a lot of problems with our um, financial situation within almost every First Nations within across Turtle Island and you know everybody's writing proposal after proposal like I've said before you know and here here right in front of us we have this idea, like right in front of us, and it's like nobody's taking any steps forward except places like Tendonega, except uh, Six Nations, um, who have come upon themselves to come up with this, uh, you know, like take it upon themselves to start opening up dispensaries. And now, like I said, you know, we have to start doing that. Uh, we have to start setting up shop now, like, you know, don't wait, man, just like I said, we should be doing this right now, we should have a shop in downtown Toronto, where, you know, First Nations own, First Nations run, all employees First Nations, and then, you know, funneling, like I said, some, funneling some of that cash towards some of our needs within the community and within First Nations issues. Like I said, whether it be homeless situation, whether it be recreational, whether it be missing murdered Native women, whether it be the, like I said, currently there's a court case going on with the 60 scoop, you know, maybe possibly we can start funneling some of that cash that we make from dispensaries towards causes like the six of scoop and some of the survivors that are still with us today. Um, but you know, those are just ideas, right? And like I said, there's a whole lot of ideas that you can come up with, but the, the whole, like I said, but first you gotta start off somewhere, you know? I said, you know, hopefully one of these days, you know, and real soon, you know, like we should be getting involved, you know, like not today, not tomorrow. We should have been getting involved, you know, yesterday. We should have been getting involved a week ago, a month ago, a year ago getting into the whole idea of getting into businesses like this. Because we're always crying about, you know, uh, trying to get money off uh, the government to, uh, 
to, uh, you know, to uh, what, you know. We're always, like, complaining about money or trying to ask for money or like, trying to come up with ways to, uh, um, you know, uh, deal with our issues. But here we have, like, it's almost like it's right in front of us. How come we don't get into this business, man? And like I said, hopefully tomorrow, today, you know, today we see one of these open up. And let's put these conferences, put these meetings, and start firing, start, you know, start getting the funding, start getting the help that we need, and and do it, man. Let's do it. Uh, for Gary Yang, Wasakizik, Real People's Media, talk to you soon. Very good.